You'll never guess what I've been doing in the background. That's right, absolutely nothing. So instead of a montage, you get an intro. Now today, we're going to be talking about, and hopefully making, engine mounts. Now these are the ones that I chopped off, and there is a lot more to them than simply holding an engine in a frame. So for the next few minutes, you can endure me explaining how engine mounts work in a garbled explanation that I understand in my head, but I can't portray in the real world. Anyway, let's begin. Now firstly, there are three major things of concern with engine mounts. Firstly, is the angle at which it's sitting. Secondly is the stiffness in this direction, and thirdly is the stiffness in this direction. Now in case you didn't know, vibrations are movement, and every vibration can be calculated. Thankfully, engineers are a little bit smart, and all of these individual vibration calculations can be simplified into one little equation, right there. And what this does is it allows you to tune your engine mounts in terms of the stiffness of the rubber in both this direction and this direction, and also based on the angle in which it's pointed at the engine. Now what you also notice in this case is that it's also based on the center of mass of the engine, which is somewhere around there. Now obviously I don't have the means to find the center of mass accurately on this engine, but what I can do is use that calculation along with the angles on the existing engine mounts to do what engineers do best. Estimate. Or guess. Now you might ask yourself, what are the consequences of not listening to engineers when I make my engine mounts? Well, the answer is you're going to get a lot of driveline vibrations and a lot of engine vibrations. Now, if you've watched the Skid Factory building their Nissan Patrol with a Cummins engine in it, you'll notice that they got a lot of vibrations. And a lot of this could have been mitigated if they'd used this guideline to design their engine mounts. But I'm not shitting on Skid Factory. I think they make amazing things. I'm just saying that's a possible improvement that they could have made to that build. There's also something else to consider when making engine mounts. The weight of the engine. They're a bit heavy. Now this engine is actually quite a bit lighter than the one that I took out. The engine itself, by unreliable sources, I have found is about 390 kilos. Coupled with the gearbox, you can probably inaccurately round that up to about 500 kilos for the whole thing. Now using this information, along with what we know about the engine, we can do some things that everybody loves. Maths. Now this car, when it has an engine, supposedly makes 750 newton meters at the wheels. Now if we overestimate and round up, we can call that a thousand newton meters at the crank. It's probably not, but it's probably not far off. Now let's assume we over-exaggerated on the torque. We have a thousand newton meters coming out of this engine at the crank. And we also know how much the engine weighs. We can assume that's divided between the two engine mounts. It's probably not exactly, but it's probably close. Then what we can do is add the forces that would be exerted by the engine at maximum torque, divide that by two, because there's two engine mounts, and that'll give us the very minimum that our engine needs to withstand in order to cope with the power it's putting out. Now with engineering, there's something called a safety factor. You pretty much get it in all the trades, from anything from builders to electricians. And what this is, is a factor of safety that firstly copes with any miscalculations, and secondly, gives you a bit more scope for abuse and making something that'll last quite a long time because there are such things as cycles till failure. But that's a job for another video, probably not one of mine, because I didn't do very well in that subject. Anyway, with all that in mind, to the computer. Now seeing as we know from other videos, I'm a walking, talking contradiction, I'm gonna be ignoring all the advice I've just given, simply for the fact that I'm very limited on space on this build. Now I don't have the luxury of having the room to make an angled plate that I can mount my engine mount to. So in this case, I'm going to have to use rotating polyurethane bushes. Now what this essentially does is eliminates my longitudinal forces and means that the only forces exerted on these engine mounts are going to be tensile and compressive. What this basically means is I can probably match the angle of the original engine mounts, but it's going to be nowhere near as finessed as the ones the Touareg had originally. 
And the next thing you can do once everything's all designed is something called FEA, and this means finite element analysis. What happens is the software splits your component into a million little pieces and calculates each component depending on the forces you're applying to it, and then also calculates how that element acts on its neighbor. And the result is it's able to compare all the elements and find out where the maximum and minimum forces are. Now, once you know what material you're using, in my case, I'm using 5 mil mild steel. You can compare this to the strength and modulus of your material and figure out whether the material is actually strong enough to cope with the forces. And if it doesn't, it means you can either change your design or change your material or scrap the idea completely. And finally, this is where you apply your safety factor. You basically take your maximum force on the material, multiply it by your safety factor, and as long as this end result is less than the maximum strength of the material, then you're good to go. In theory, Anyway, now that you're all suitably bored or confused or both, it's time to make these things. This means I'm about to make a lot of sparks and use fancy machines, so it might appeal to the Neanderthals among you. So let's do that. So this is what I'm left with for now. These engine mounts from the Toreg are actually extremely complicated for engine mounts. And so far everything's going perfectly. You've got all these contours which are designed to go around components. This side is a cable relief and all of these are awesome and it all fits up really nicely. Now at the moment I've only tacked these in place because I've had to specially order this material. It's not something I really carry in stock at the moment. So I've tacked them on so I can grind them off if I need to, to reuse them. Because the last thing I want to do is spend a load of money on overpriced small amounts of material. But aside from that, what I'm doing is I'm getting my base measurements. I've got all my hole spacings absolutely perfect. I've got my angles perfect. And what I'm going to do is reposition this mounting hole in 3D space. So I can choose exactly where I want this point in a 3D position, let's say here, and I can then take these measurements and make infill plates to add reinforcement to it. Because there are a lot of other things to consider on this engine mount. For example, I've got an exhaust manifold sitting about here, so I have to extend past there to allow for tool access. And then once I've got one side done, obviously I've got the frame around here. So I then have to make another frame mount to coincide with this engine mount that I'm making here to give me the correct vertical spacing as well as horizontal spacing because the steering box is there and has a arm that comes back to the steering wheel on the steering column. So there's a lot of stuff to consider. Now this is where I'm going to leave you for the day because I don't want to have to spend all my time worrying about which way a camera is pointing which might distract me from something that may cause me to have to remake the entire engine mounts. Because at the moment it requires quite a lot of concentration and a lot of very accurate measurements. And the last thing I want to do is have to throw everything in the scrap bin because I was worrying about which way the camera was pointing. So in the next episode, the engine mounts will be done. Maybe I'll add a bit more into the other video. And then we can start doing some real things.